Hello, everyone. Um, it's always strange to have someone introduce you because when you're, when you're in your lane and you're, you're, you're focused and you're hyper-focused like I get on what you're doing, you forget about all of the things you've done. You forget the path that you've been on. You're just focused on what's ahead of you. So today, I, I want to give you a, a story about my path from West Texas to saving the world. And it's been a wonderful journey. And it all started... Um, with my trusty steed, Poncho, I was lefty. We were going to be um, the greatest cowgirl miniature Welsh pony team that, that ever existed. Um, he was my best friend. <laughs> um, I was a little bit of a strange child. Um, I was a tomboy, and I did not travel the same paths that the other girls did. And this is something that I, I don't know why, but that, that's just how I was, how I was wired. We were, we, were, we were really great friends, and I had an amazing family around me that saw something in me. I, I still am not quite sure what it is they saw, but they saw something in me that was different and something that they wanted to encourage. And so they put this little bubble around me, and they, they encouraged me to go and learn and, and do. And I was the first person in my family to go to college, um, they thought that was wonderful and great. Yeah, she's going to go to college. My, my family was very proud of me. And they got a little confused when I went to graduate school. And then they got really confused when I went to get my PhD and kept asking me what, what grade I was in, like the 32nd grade, <laughs> and when, when I was going to get a job. Um, then they were really confused when I went to Mayo Clinic for my, my um, junior fellowship and even more so when I went to Duke for my senior fellowship. Um, and then at the grand age of 31, I got my first real job. I co-founded my first company. But it all started here in West Texas where I chased horny toads and captured as many as I could um, and went on many adventures with Poncho. The inspiration for where I am in large part came from my grandmother. This is my grandmother. Her name was Wainima, and Wainima is Native American for woman chief. So I was raised by a woman chief. My mother's name is also Wainima. So I, I had a very strong um, female line bringing me through this, through this path I was on. And what inspired me about her was she was very ill. And I went to a lot of doctor's appointments with her. I would go and spend time with her at the hospital, and any time I was with her, with her doctors and medical team, she would always tell them how this was her granddaughter, and her granddaughter was going to be a doctor when she grew up. And that was, that was the seed that, that my grandmother planted in me. What happened with my grandmother was she was very sick, and no one could figure out why. And many of the healthcare providers, and, and some of our family as well, had written her off as a hypochondriac. She suffered with tremendous pain, and it wasn't that the doctors didn't want to help her, they just didn't have the right tools to be able to help her. They didn't understand what was really going on. So that really, that really left a mark on me. And, you know, a long journey to get where I am today, I'm the CEO for a periomics, and we are changing everything about how infections are identified, because the current system is completely broken, and my grandmother was uh, uh, was a casualty of the fact that the system is completely broken. Everyone here has gone to the doctor and been told something along the lines of, I think you have an infection. Here's some antibiotics. If you don't feel better in a few days, give me a call. That's the standard of care, even today. And we need to do better than that. We can do better than that, and that's what my company is doing. We are the first company in the world to be able to offer patients a way to identify every known bacteria, virus, parasite, and fungus from any clinical sample, blood, tissue, urine, fecal, in one test. So instead of making educated guesses as to what someone may or may not have, let's find out what they actually have, and let's give them a targeted treatment so they can get better. And it's working. We have been on the market for just over a year, and the way our service works is you collect a sample, again, blood, tissue, urine, stool, any type of a clinical sample. You send us that sample. We do sequencing on that sample. And what that is, it takes the genetic information from the sample and it creates a blueprint of everything in the sample. 
And from that, we have software that is able to make sense of this very large, very complex data file and match it up to everything that's known. It's over 37,000 possibilities. So this is, this is changing everything. Um, and then we generate a report that goes back to the patient's doctor so the doctor can, for the first time ever, see exactly what's going on in the patient and be able to um, create a treatment plan that is going to help the patient finally get better. So just to illustrate how important and how life-changing this technology is, these are real case studies. This is a young woman who suffers from a condition called interstitial cystitis. This is a condition that is considered autoimmune. There's no known cause, there's no known cure. We, she's, for 15 years, she's suffered with this condition. She's not an older person, she's a young woman. She can't go on vacation, she can't hold down a full-time job, she can't sleep through the night. This is debilitating. It presents as a urinary tract infection. So imagine, for those of you who've suffered with a urinary tract infection, the pain, the urgency, the very unpleasantness of suffering with something like that for 15 years. We tested her, and a week later, we had answers. She had a virus and two bacteria that should not be there. When she was treated for those, those things, she got better. She now holds her first full-time job at the age of 35. This is going to change people's lives. One of these people is actually my mother. She suffered from the same condition, and she, for the first time in, in you know, many, many years, can sleep through the night. Another interesting case that we um, have been working on is an autism-like illness. These are children that um, are like anyone else's children. They're normal, healthy children. They get strep throat. Within a matter of... of just overnight, these children develop autism-like disorders. They become OCD, they develop severe issues with neurological symptoms, they um, develop eating disorders, they become very, very difficult children to care for overnight. And um, it's called pediatric autoimmune neurological syndrome. The condition is, is not well understood. They believe that it's an autoimmune reaction. Um, there's a lot of autoimmune, autoimmune things that I'm sure most of you are familiar with, things like fibromyalgia, things like chronic fatigue, um, things like Crohn's disease. Our working hypothesis is that there's no such thing as an autoimmune condition. They just don't know what's there. They just can't identify what's there that's causing the immune response. And so um, with this child, this particular case, um, five years old, for three years, this child has been suffering, been on almost constant antibiotics for, the, for most of his life. And that's not a good way to raise a child. That's not a good way for a human being to, to navigate through life being on antibiotics constantly. It's very damaging. Um, many doctors, many treatments, parents are so frustrated. The parents, you know, we, we talk to them on the phone, they're in tears. They, they want to help their child, but nobody can figure out what's going on. So we run a test. We run a blood test, and we did a swab of the oropharyngeal space. And this child had a fungus and a bacteria that should not be there. And when he was treated, his symptoms completely resolved. What if autism is a fungal infection? That's one of the questions we're trying to answer right now. So we are working with dozens of patients that have this condition, and we are working to try to identify what is really going on in these patients and following them and tracking them through treatment and hopefully resolution of symptoms so we can come up with some real answers and make some real difference in people's lives. And again, this goes around full circle. This goes back to the days where I would sit with my grandmother in the doctor's office and listen to the doctors um, you know, struggle with how to help her. If my technology, if, if the technology that a periomics is, is using right now was around when my grandmother was, was so sick, she, she may still be alive today. And so that's the power of what we're doing. We are changing the world through information. My, my staff, we, we, have, we have a couple of, of, of missions and mantras we live by. So our mission 
is to change everything about how infections are identified because it's not working. What we're doing is not working. Everyone in here has somebody, either themselves or their family, is suffering with an issue, and the doctors don't know why. The other mantra is, the truth will set you free. When you know what's really going on, you can address it. And for some of our patients, some of these patients are having, being told they have psychiatric issues. I have one patient who was institutionalized for a psychiatric condition, and really, they just had an infection that needed to be treated. These patients go through the system, and the system doesn't know what to do with them. So they you know, throw their hands up and say, I'm sorry, I can't help you, or there's nothing wrong with you. Imagine being told by your doctor that there's nothing wrong with you, but you know there's something wrong with you. And as a patient, if you get defiant, about being told there's nothing wrong with you, then you're labeled as, as a psych case, and you are, you are referred to a psychiatric institution. That is completely demoralizing to these patients. And with, through our testing, even if we can't do anything to treat the issue they have, just knowing I am sick, that's enough for a lot of these patients. And that would have been enough for my grandmother, knowing okay, you're sick, there's nothing we can do to help you, we can help you manage, but there's nothing we can do to cure you, would have been tremendous. That would have made such a, a, a tremendous improvement in her quality of life. And it would have changed the relationship with her family. Um, so, so that's what a periomics is doing. Um, it's been a long road from West Texas through to um, a periomics and, and leading a company forward with with. with literally life-changing technology, but it all started here, and it's great to be back, and I appreciate the opportunity to speak to everyone. Thank you.